Welcome to Pride and Parsimony. I'm your host, Mayor James Barbero. Today with me, I have Jane Beeline, who's the head of the library. Am I correct? Yeah. All right, I'm all good. Still. I like to I like to have fun here. <laughs> okay. And <laughs> Debbie and Seta. Yeah, right. And um, Debbie's our PR coordinator. Oh, good. That's great. So here's what I'm going to do before we get going with the program. Can you give us a little background of yourself, uh, Jane? Sure. Um, came to Parsippany 26 years ago. Um, prior to that, I lived in Pennsylvania and I worked as a children's librarian first, and then I became an assistant director. Um, I was a children's librarian at the Oosterhout Library in Wilkes-Barre, and then I was um, the assistant director and branch coordinator at the Scranton Public Library. Mm -hmm. And then I had what I consider to be an awesome opportunity to come to Parsippany. Debbie? Um, I've been working for the library for almost 25 years in June. Um, I started at Mount Tabor, at the Mount Tabor branch. I worked part-time nights and Saturdays. And then I became the manager, the branch manager. And just recently in January, I was assigned as the public relations coordinator. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Well. I know one thing, the library's come a long way since I've been a kid in Parsippany. It used to be in Green Hill Shopping Center. Wow. It used to be on the end, um, the very last building, and that was that, that was our library. And then it went to Parsippany Road, where the um, Board of Education building is. And I have some, uh, there was a gentleman there, Mr. McDougal, who used to run. I don't know yes. if you remember Mr. Yes. McDougal. Yes. We do. <laughs> <laughs> our he, security he, guard. He actually, he <coughs> came to visit me about a month, two months ago. Oh. <clears throat> because I saw his sister and I said, yeah, your, your brother used to kick me out of the <laughs> <laughs> Not kick me out because I did something wrong because I didn't do that. Um, no. Because um, 9 o'clock came around and um, at that time everything was a little bit different than it is now and that's why I'm talking about that. I remember sitting there listening to the headphones and listening to the Beatles mm. um, in the library. But it has come a long way. I don't even think the Dewey Decimal System exists anymore because there's no drawers to pull out anything anymore. Maybe I'm wrong. But um, this, this, I'm going to start off with this question, Jane. What's new at the library? But there is so much new at the library. Um, when you were talking about the Dewey Decimal System, we now have everything is on the computer, you know, you c and you can right. access it from just about any device you have. We, um, you can access the card, what you know as the card catalog, um, to be able to access the holdings, not just for our library, but any library in Morris County. So um, that's great. But we have so much technology. Um, we have this new space in the library called a maker space. And what that is, is it's a, an actual area of the library that's designated to let people come in, use special equipment, and create um, some wonderful things. Our space is called um, Make make a memory space because one of the things that um, is available is this printer where people can come in and take slides and convert them to um, prints. They can do scrapbooking, um, they can laminate pictures. People who want to do um, stickers and those sorts of things for birthday parties, um, they can also do that. Wow. Um, with yeah, the, um, the, it's a die cut mas machine, so they can scan and then they can use this die cut machine to create decorations or images that they could use for um, whatever they want to, to create a memory. And there's also a uh, keyboard. All right. Keyboard, and um, so you could create your own music and put it to video. We have a GoPro camera, which I happen to bring. This is. I don't know if you're familiar with it or not. Yeah, I, I am. Okay. And we also have all of the um, attachments that go with it. So you can put it on your head. You could put it on um, anything. It comes in a whole box. And you can actually check this out. A person could come and borrow it. Oh, wow. So th but this is in the um, maker space, so you'll, you could use it. And there's, we offer training days um, so people could come in and train and then they'll get this special library card where they could reserve the room and use it any time they want for two hours, I think, if it, you could reserve it for. So they could... That's yeah. great. No, yeah. that is. And maker clubs for the kids. And on um, March 19th, that's um, when the entire state of New Jersey celebrates Maker Day. 
So all three of our libraries will have programs for families that day. Um, so people need to go to our website to check out the exact times. But it's a lot of fun, and it, it's just what it sounds like. You can make and create things. Um, we received a grant, a $10,000 grant, to provide this space. And we did consult the teachers from um, Brooklyn Middle School. Oh, wow, yeah. So we said, you know, what would you like to see in this space? And um, they said, that a lot of their kids take the media classes, and then when class is over, they don't have any equipment to have fun with or mm. to use at home. So they felt that this, this equipment that we have in the maker space, there's a green screen, there's the GoPro camera, they can make their own movies, they can write their own music. So when you used to listen to the Beatles, oh. they c we could be having the new Beatles in Parsippany <laughs> now. It's well also then. a great opportunity for teens to get involved in to help out. And they can, um, once they get their maker card, they can assist other customers to come in and show them what to do, how to do it. Well, it's so funny you say that, though, about the Beatles. When I was in the library listening, um, we did get yelled at because we had the headphones on and we started singing to it. Uh -huh. And of course, <laughs> Wait, you know, that's you don't nothing know. now. But we do, <laughs> have, a, we do <laughs> have a mic too in the <laughs> makerspace, so you can create your own beautiful <laughs> songs. Can you explain how the library has evolved into being more than just books? I mean, yes. Um, when I first came here, I was was really surprised at how much our libraries were used for meetings. Um, community groups would meet at the library. And to me, that was a surprise because that was out of the box back in those days. And now the library continues to be used by these meeting groups, our township groups, um, township committees, service groups meet at the library. But people use the library now to, if they have their own business um, and they're just working from home, they sometimes go to the library just to be around other people right, or socialize. to socialize and also to have some quiet space to themselves. Mm -hmm. um, we have Wi-Fi so you can, you know, you're able to use the internet in the library. You can sit there with your own computer and your headphones mm -hmm. and, you know, just have some, some space away from home. But we have so many groups that meet and kids who come in now and use group study rooms to work on projects together. So that's changed. But people, the, the need for people to gather together, I think it's, it's just heightened in its importance. And people see the library as the center of our community, <coughs> the cultural center as well as the educational right. center. And I think that's great. Yeah. There's also, we also have a technology lab right. that's open. I was gonna, that was my next question is, yeah. um, how is um, the library help with technology? Because I know you guys teach classes there as well. Yes. So. There's, um, there's monthly technology classes as well as one-on-ones. Somebody could call in and um, um, the library uh, technician could meet with you on whatever your concern is. She visits the branches once a month and sets up appointments there also. So, And the, the tech lab is open to the public, so if there's a group that needs to do something as a group with technology, it's there for their use. And some of the classes are things like how to search Google or um, how to use Google Chrome and Excel and Word. And, you know, often she gets senior citizens mm -hmm. in and especially for Tech Tuesday, that's what we call it at the main library. So, I mean, I think it's a wonderful service because if you get a device for Christmas, like a, <laughs> a Kindle or an iPad, and your family doesn't live in this area, how are you supposed to learn how to use it? And Valerie Smith, who's our, our tech librarian, our emerging technologies librarian, is very good at teaching everyone um, how to use a device. Mm -hmm. um, your smartphone, if you have a question about that, she's right there to, to help you, you know, work through whatever That's you need great. to I solve. I should ask her how to back up my iPad. Sure. She just keeps telling in. me to back it up, and I, every time I try to back yeah. it up, it just won't back up. Right. <laughs> and but sometimes family members aren't as helpful with right. these <laughs> 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 Or as patient. <laughs> <laughs> 
I might get frustrated. You haven't backed it up in 34 weeks. Well, I don't know how. <laughs> you should come visit and you should set up an appointment with Valerie. So, but anyway, can you um, also discuss the museum pass program? Oh, yes. We have museum passes. And I think you belong, I know you belong to one of the organizations that donated funds for the Intrepid Pass. Um, the, the museum pass, the Sons of Italy donated um, $500 so that the library could purchase the Intrepid Museum Pass. That pass is awesome because it allows you, you come into the library, you borrow the pass with a library card, and six people from your family can go to the Intrepid Museum for oh, free. Wow. So that's yeah. just one of the museums. We have Montclair. Um, the Battleship New Jersey. Yeah, the Battleship New Jersey. The Grounds for Sculpture mm -hmm. is another one that's um, that's an expensive admission. Yeah. And with your library cards, you can really get in there for free. And you um, have it for three days. Right. You, could bar you, know, you have the pass for three it days. So. so, And you can't put it on hold, though. So no, people not. have <laughs> to take a chance <laughs> and come in. But um, it's great. I mean, if you have company visiting from out of town, yeah. I think it's it's just a great service that we offer. I know you've been there a long time. Who has the oldest fine? No, like that's just a joke. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, and, and I heard believe it or life. not, we don't. <laughs> we don't know that know. information. Yeah. It reminded me of a Seinfeld episode with the, uh, the oh, books. Oh yes, know, so. yes. Um, Bookman. <laughs> what, what is this? Um, the, the, the library's going to the dogs. What's this about? <laughs> well, once a month at our Lake Hiawatha branch and at the main library, we have the Read to a Dog program. And the whole idea is that it helps build basic literacy skills. There are children who are afraid to read in front of other people and in front of their oh. classmates. So the Read to a Dog program, where the therapy dogs come in, and they're very willing to sit there and listen to a child read. It's very, it's very touching it to see this. But apparently they've expanded, and now you can also read to a rabbit or a gerbil or a cat. <laughs> so um, it's interesting. But I think kids love the dogs the yeah. most. Oh, they, I, I can they stand in line and wait yeah. I mean, for it to see the. I have a little chihuahua at home, and when I get home sometimes from a tough day, I'm talking to the dog like it's another human being. Yeah. Like, you can believe they said this and this one. And it looks at me like, but he looks at me like, hey, I'm listening to you. And it gives the children confidence. Yes. Yeah. And no. Listen I, listen, I never thought I'd like a little dog, but I love this little dog. Not that it gives me confidence because, you know. <laughs> okay, I got to see you outside. This is some questions that we wrote down. I know you offer much more than children's programs. Discuss the teen and adult programs. That's a good okay, point. Okay, do you want to do teen first? Okay, teens. Um, there's a um, group called the TAB group. It's the Teen Advisory Board. And these are teens that, um, who are interested in the library. Anybody can volunteer. And they come and help shape the library. There's um, a special section in, in the main library that's teen called Teen Center. And this is designated for teens. And they could come in and share ideas and speak with the teen librarian about programming and what they want to see at the library. Uh, there's some programs coming up in March, um, and there's also many volunteers. It's a great opportunity for teens to volunteer. They help throughout the library, not just in the teens department. So it gives them their community service hours that they need. Some of the programs are doing a, um, a between uh, book club for grades five six, uh, five, six, and seven that'll meet, and also a cooking uh, blog right. recipe right. <laughs> <laughs> program where teens could get together and bring in their favorite recipe. They have to make it first because we don't cook at the library. So they bring in their favorite recipe and then they discuss um, uh, chefs, cooks, programs all about cooking wow. and then they taste their what they bring oh, in. Yeah. So. Wow. And there also is a special program the end of March. I believe it's the, the leap year. Oh, the, the end of February. Yeah. The end of right. February, I'm the sorry. Leap year the leap program. program. My best man at my yeah. wedding is leap year baby. Oh, see that? I think he's going to be six years old now. Wow. I mean, like There's <laughs> a couple. <laughs> <laughs> and then for adults, we have, um, we have many different programs. We have um, 
two librarians who are responsible for organizing most of the adult programs, and one of them does a few music programs, um, concerts in the library, and that, oh. that seems to be a mm -hmm. big hit. Um, we don't um, interfere with your summer ca concert schedule, okay? I just oh, want to make okay. sure you know that. <laughs> <laughs> but we have performers do um, concerts year-round, and we hope that that generates some interest in your concerts, because we mm -hmm. do announce the concert schedule there. Right. So that's um, one of the programs we have. But then we have things that, um, lectures and, and those types of things that people might be interested in. For example, um, on March 29th, we're doing an astronomy adventure, and that's um, pictures of the planets with, with an actual scientist talking about it, um, talking about ro robotic missions to outer space. And then um, there's one on disasters, um, where the, the presenter will show some real disasters, I hope not Hurricane Sandy oh. or Irene, <laughs> in oh. New Jersey, um, and talk about you know what's been changed as a result of these disasters. The other program we have, and some people get a little upset when we mention it, it's called the Death Cafe. And it's, it's not really what it sounds like by the title. Um, what happened was our, our one librarian was reading an article in the New York Times and it's about people who get together and they just talk about their thoughts and concerns about death yes. mm -hmm. and learning about the whole process after death. We had um, the two funeral directors in town actually came and spoke to them about their concerns and what they go through in their profession. Um, but I like what um, our librarian says whenever she um, introduces this program. It's thoughts and experiences regarding death with a view of helping us make the most of our lives. So it's a really interesting group that meets. Yeah, you and never think that. Yes, mm -hmm. and they, they enjoy like each other's about that, though. Right, they enjoy each other's company. Yeah. And did you want to talk about our sports program? Oh, um, in April, April 26th, um, there's going to be a program about Yogi Berra. Uh. Um, yes. <laughs> Dave Kaplan, who is the founder of the um, um, Yogi Berra Museum at Montclair, will be coming and speaking about Yogi Berra and his life and the, um, and the, the museum and learning center at Montclair State University. So it should be very exciting. That would be exciting. I mean, Yogi Berra is an icon. Yes. I, mean, I, don't know, I, mean, he won the most, I think he won the most World Series as a, out of any catcher and any, anybody, actually. <laughs> We'll I mean, look it up when we go back. Yeah, right, I'm, a, I'm, a big, I'm a Yankee, I'm a Yankee, <laughs> Yankee fan. fan. So that's I, uh, good. I can tell you stories. I might go to that because I'll tell stories good, that I heard good. from people that oh, were at games when he was uh, playing. So. And he, um, this um, Dave Kaplan is going to do a uh, photo exhibit downstairs in the gallery at the library. So you'll be able to see some oh, photographs and, and images. Well, I got a picture of Don Larson. Uh, he signed it for me throwing out his uh, pitch in the no-hit World Series when he pitched the perfect game in the World Series against the Dodgers. And of course, Yogi Berra was the catcher. So, you also have the Job Seeker program? We do. Um, on Wednesdays, um, every Wednesday, we have this New Jersey professional support group. And they come and they'll, they'll vet people's resumes um, and have discussions with them. But our librarian, our reference librarian, is going to talk about this database called Ref USA that's early in March. And anyone can attend that mm -hmm. program. I believe it's March 2nd. And um, she'll explain if people are in the sales business, how they can get some um, tips, you know, local contacts and that kind of thing, um, how they find them um, in their particular sphere of interest. But it's interesting to see this professional support group because it's people who are helping others to find mm -hmm. jobs. I think that's really important. That is important. That's, that's, that's and easy out there. So. Right. And most of our databases and resources in the library, we have many that help people. We have this database that um, even some of the school principals were surprised to hear about. It's called tutor.com. And it does resume building for adults. but for kids after school provides tutoring, free tutoring, 
All you need is to go on the library's website and you get to interact with a live tutor. Um, and then at the Lake Hiawatha branch, you do have a live oh, tutor dear. because um, the National Honor Society does tutoring for kids for free on Saturdays. So, and that's a great program. Yeah. They have so many people who are interested in that program. And it's great for the kids who are doing the tutoring because they get the credit they mm -hmm. need for the National Honor Society. I'm mm -hmm. kind of curious. I'm looking at this here. Yes, I'm yes. One of these. Well, <laughs> I'm glad you asked, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> this is called a playaway view. And it's for kids. And I don't know if you remember this story, Ralph the Mouse, from the Beverly Cleary books when we were kids. Well, when I was a kid, yeah. you were probably too I'm young. I'm Dr. Seuss. I know, you're a Dr. Seuss, Seuss. fan. None was, they didn't have any in. But it's a little screen here. And the kids just have to turn it on, and they watch a little movie about a story. About so oh, the story. it's good children's literature. Yeah. Then these are, are for adults. And I brought two because it's fiction and nonfiction, but work rules, insights from inside Google. And inside, it's what we used to call a Walkman <laughs> years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a miniature. And you just put your headphones in, and, and you can walk around and listen to a book listen while to you're a story. right while you're uh -huh. walking. And we also do have them for children, right? Besides the view, there's the the ones that they listen right. to. How can people find out about the library services? What's well, I think the best way is to go on our website, right. which. Um, they can go onto the town website, which points mm -hmm. to our website, or they can go directly to parsippanylibrary.org. Um, the other way is they could call the library and subscribe to our e-newsletter. We put out a newsletter once a week. I know you do, too. And you highlight some of mm -hmm. our programs. Right. And we try to do the same for you. And what else, Deb, do you think? Well, you can a also access the newsletter through the library website if you wanted to sign up through that right. way. Of course, there's visiting the library and its <laughs> branches. That's always a, a fun thing. And uh, the media is has been very supportive and helpful. Parsippany Life, especially. Oh, Parsippany Life. And, and, also th the and also through the schools. Um, right. The schools, we send our information, our, our programming through the schools so parents can access the child's backpack that way and right. see what's going on through that. Well, there's so much more to talk about, but <coughs> of course there's always a time limit and I don't know if the network will let me continue. <laughs> 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 but that being said, I'm Jane, Debbie, thank you so much for not only informing the residents, but for always being there for the community. Um, you know, I, I know I see you, used to see you a lot of Kiwanis, I mean, I don't go as much because I'm too busy, but um, you know, you guys do so much for the community, for the children, for the adults as well. Um, even for me, because it's amazing when I go there. It's amazing to move they had on Parsimony Road to this place. Mm -hmm. And I love the little, it, it, you know what? No matter what, you're always a kid in your heart. When I walk into your library and I go to that children's section, it makes me feel like way back in the 1965, 66, when I was a kid in Parsippany. So Aww. it just does. It makes you feel good. It's like, ah, this is Parsippany. So. That's so nice to yes. hear. And I have to give a shout out to my two volunteer groups, my board of trustees, okay, yes. who you've appointed. Right. And they're doing a great job for the library. And also the friends of the library who raise money mm -hmm. on our behalf. Well, they so do a great job. You're they right, absolutely do. correct. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in once again to uh, Pride and Parsippany. And until next time, God bless, and see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.